Welcome to Local Matters, where we talk about what's happening in our area. I'm Elizabeth Shanahan Jewett. Let's get started. If you live in this area, you know we were slammed with a powerful nor'easter last Wednesday, October 27th, leaving at one point more than 500,000 homes without power. High winds of more than 80 miles an hour uprooted and knocked down trees all over the South Shore, sending distressed homeowners to navigate inoperable traffic lights while trying to find open stores with chainsaws, generators, and flashlights still in stock. Those who did have chainsaws worked together to clear their neighborhood streets of downed trees. Eversource crews mobilized quickly, staging hundreds of trucks on Thursday from several states and Canada to be ready as soon as it was safe to begin repairs. The Eversource texts with undetermined repair estimate date or time on Thursday quickly morphed into a promise of 99% customer service returned by 6 p.m. on Saturday a monumental task, which they achieved. Crises of all kinds are clarifying. They force us to focus on what is really important, who is there for us, and what we can do without. Doing without electricity for up to three days was really hard, but doing without each other, impossible. Thank you to the first responders, Eversource, the tree services, the amateur chainsaw crews, and all of you who bore the lack of electricity and coffee with grace and maybe got to have a longer conversation with your neighbor than you've had in a while. Experience a taste of America's colonial past as you gather at Plymouth Patuxent Museums for a 17th century New England harvest feast. An evening of entertainment and hospitality awaits you as you sit down to a 17th century meal filled with the finest food that this season of plenty has to offer. Before dinner, you'll be entertained with rounds of centuries-old psalms and songs and may be convinced to join in the singing. Your host will then guide you through the meal, answering your questions about England and Plymouth, both then and now. Experience this season of plenty with fare ranging from a sweet pudding of native corn to wood-pressed cider, roasted turkey, pork loin, fish, and much more, all at a communal table enjoying a family-style meal. There are several upcoming dates to choose from. To learn more, get tickets, and a complete list of the menu items, visit the Plymouth Patuxent Museum's Facebook page or website. Human beings are complex and varied. Our differences make us unique and should be celebrated. But most people, especially at a young age, struggle with the feelings that can arise from being different from others around us. This next piece features longtime Plymouth resident Betty Whedon, and her story about growing up different here in town. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, in a faraway land called Plymouth, Massachusetts, there lived a little brown girl. The little brown girl lived in a big white house on a high hill overlooking the town. Now located there is the Stop and Shop grocery store. The little brown girl was raised by her grandparents from the age of three. She loved her home because it was surrounded by woods. She grew up with many, many, many animals such as rabbits, chickens, roosters, goats, and her dog, Sport. One day when she came home from school, she couldn't find her goat. She asked her grandmother, where is my goat? Her grandmother told her that her little goat was going to be for supper. The little brown girl was very, very sad, but had to remember what her grandparents had taught her. They always told her that when they came here from the Cape Verde Islands, they had to work very hard. They wanted to buy a home and they did. They also to raise animals and to have a large garden for food. The little brown girl was taught strong work ethics, to be prideful and respectful of others. She had many chores. Her favorite was getting eggs from the hen house and picking blueberries in the woods 
behind her white home. Her dog Sport always went with her. There was one thing that the little brown girl couldn't understand, especially as she got older. Why was there a hand pump in the kitchen and a very small house outside called an outhouse for bathroom needs? It never bothered her when she was a little brown girl, but as she got older, it confused her. When she visited her relatives and her friends' homes, they had indoor plumbing. Her grandparents were content. However, as the little brown girl got older and noticed the differences, she was so embarrassed to tell anyone. As a teenager going through high school, she never shared how different she felt with no indoor plumbing. She never, never invited any of her friends to her home. After the brown girl graduated from high school, her grandparents sold the White House on the hill. They built a new home with indoor plumbing. The grown-up brown young woman continued to live with her grandparents, taking care of them as they got older. As the years have gone by, the grown-up brown woman has never forgotten the White House on the hill with its outdoor plumbing. What is most important to her is that she never felt different from anyone because of the color of her skin only because she didn't have indoor plumbing. Thank you, Betty. As we honor and thank all of our veterans on November 11th, the Duxbury Rural and Historical Society is offering another way to appreciate the commitment and sacrifice of those who've served our country. Explore the lives of some of Duxbury's war veterans on a tour through Mayflower Cemetery with archivist and historian Carolyn Ravenscroft. Ravenscroft will tell the stories of these courageous men and women using letters, diaries, and other primary sources from the Drew Archival Library. This Veterans Day tour will take place from 3 to 4 p.m. and begin near the gate next to First Parish Church, where there is also parking available. Visit the Duxbury Rural and Historical Society website to register, or call the office with any questions at 781-934-6106. One of the few holidays that originate in America, Thanksgiving is associated with many enduring myths that hold both straightforward and complex meanings. On Saturday, November 6th at 1 p.m., learn more about the historical root of this national observance with Dr. Donna Curtin in a virtual history tour of the first Thanksgiving. Dr. Curtin will discuss colonial events, later traditions, and differing perspectives that shape our holiday gatherings on the fourth Thursday of each November. Pilgrim Hall Museum partners with the Plymouth Antiquarian Society to present a different historical exploration every first Saturday of the month. To watch The First Thanksgiving, visit either organization's Facebook page for the free live stream beginning at 1 p.m. You do not need a Facebook account to access the program. For more information, visit the Pilgrim Hall website at pilgrimhall.org or call the Antiquarian Society at 508-746-0012. The Greater Plymouth Performing Arts Center, Inc. is a nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting the vibrant South Shore arts community. In 2012, community preservation funds allowed GPPAC to acquire and renovate what we now know as The Spire, a performing arts center with classrooms for performing arts education, a recording studio, rehearsal studios, and of course, the architecturally beautiful 225 seat performance hall that boasts superior acoustics and state-of-the-art lighting. The variety of musical performances, theater productions, concerts, classes, and variety shows presented each year has made the Spire one of the cultural cornerstones of our area. And then, of course, the pandemic affected everything. Now that hopefully we are back to planning for life post-COVID, we thought we'd check in with this nonprofit community gem to find out what's new and next for the Spire.
Julie Thompson spoke to Executive Director Kevin Shanley. Kevin Shanley, thanks so much for joining us, the Executive Director of the Spire Center. We talked months and months and months ago, right, in the, in the heart of the pandemic, and it had really affected the Spire. You were really looking forward to the day when you could reopen your doors to people and to acts. So tell me, where are you now and, and how do you feel about it? Well, thank you so much for having me. The Spire Center is back open. We are so excited to have people back in, uh, in, our, in our venue again, in our seats, filling our seats. Uh, it's great to see smiling faces and applause. Uh, that really welcomes the uh, and entertainers, welcomes the uh, staff and everybody back into the Spire Center. So we are so excited uh, to have folks back. A couple of changes uh, since pre-COVID. Now we do require proof of vaccination and negative COVID test, uh, excuse me, or negative COVID test within 72 hours prior to entry. So simply folks just present that to uh, staff outside in their granted entry. Uh, and then masks are required until patients take their seats. Okay, but we are so, so excited to have to have folks. Yeah. So once you're in your seat, you can take off the mask and enjoy the the because that's half of the half of it is 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 being able to really be, talk to the people next to you and react to the to the uh, music that you're seeing or the acts that you're seeing. Now you not only have music. What else do you have available for the public to see? Sure. So we run programming uh, throughout the week and throughout the year. Um, in the summertime, we work with the Americana Theater Company. They take over the Spire Center for the month of July. Um, and now moving into the wintertime, we also have a new series as well uh, that takes place in the lobby. It's a lower price ticket than most of our other shows. Um, and folks, uh, it's a small, intimate setting, almost like you feel like you're in your living room uh, with some of your best friends listening to some incredible music from local, regional, and even national talent right in the Spire Center lobby. Now, how, that's fascinating. What what brought that on, your lobby series, rather than sitting in the, the big open venue with a big stage? What what brought that yeah. about? Absolutely. Our, our venue is a 265-seat venue, and sometimes we are presented with incredible talent um, that might not be as well known in our area. Maybe on the West Coast, they sell out all their shows with their band but they're coming to the East Coast and looking for an opportunity to, to play in front of a, a smaller audience as a solo act. Um, being able to highlight that, both our, like I said earlier, our local, our regional, and our national talent is, is really incredible opportunity. And we can continue our mission and uh, have programming throughout the week. So that's really important to us as well. That's terrific. Now you have a sound studio there and you also run classrooms. Can you talk about those other services that are offered? Sure, the Spire Center has a number of tenants in our building. Uh, the Americana Theater Company, as I spoke to earlier, uh, they are have a, uh, a, a camp in the summer, but they also have camps throughout the year and classes throughout the year that they run at the Spire Center, uh, part of their studio Americana. Um, we have uh, a Tai Chi and Qigong instructor that utilizes the space downstairs. Um, uh, tai Chi and Qigong with Fong is the name of, uh, kind of that program. And we have some other opportunities throughout the building and folks are approaching us daily with their unique ideas on how to maybe take an hour a week to have a local class or something of that nature. So we're always welcoming folks to reach out to us uh, via email or over the phone and, and have a conversation. And, and we can certainly see if we can uh, accommodate a class or anything that somebody might might want to uh, put together. Yeah. So the more people you have brought into the Spire Center and they see it, uh, the more people that can touch it, the better, the better for your organization. Now, just talk to me about the, the sound studio. That's a, a recording studio. It's a legit, I can record a, well, it's not an album anymore, but I can record a track. I can record something that I'm singing. Uh, so we, since COVID, uh, there has been some recent developments as far as, as that goes. So as of right now, it's not currently operating, okay. uh, but doesn't mean that in the future that we won't have another recording studio uh, in the Spire Center. Absolutely. Okay, we'll look forward to that. So talk to me about um, upcoming events. Like how, how, how far are you booked out right now? Oh, as you can imagine with the reschedules during COVID, we are closed for over 16 months. So we have 16 months worth of shows that we have to show, you know, you know, move to a to an upcoming year. So 2020 is jam packed, excuse me, 2022 is jam packed with programming. Uh, we run about 125 shows or more a year. Um, and we are fully booked right through uh, pretty much the middle of the middle of this uh, upcoming year, middle of summer 2022. And so you might not see it on the website just yet. We okay. work with our, our partners on announced dates and those types of things. But I can tell you, we have some really exciting and big programming coming. Even in uh, the upcoming weeks, we have some really great sold out shows as well. Wonderful. Now, do you actually have it um, booked all, all seven nights? 
So right now we per pretty much run Thursday, Friday, Saturday with some Sundays uh, and a couple of Wednesdays thrown in there as well. So, you know, as you can imagine during the, during the week, um, we're not running tons of large programs, but our tenants utilize the building as well during those days uh, for their classes and their programming. Um, and so, the, but the Spire Center box office is open throughout the week, Tuesday through Friday from noon to five. Uh, and anybody can come in, purchase tickets, be part of the part of the fun, see the space. And we love having folks in the building. And people can rent it. Like I know PAC TV rented it a few years ago. We had a wonderful um, program there. Um, and you let us rent it. Can you still do that? Oh, absolutely. We do rentals throughout the week as well. Um, that's oftentimes what we're seeing Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Sundays. Uh, folks are renting it for shows, but also for community events. Right. The Spire Centers get excited to announce a, a community event coming up uh, later in the year, uh, as well as folks use it for fundraising events right. and those types of things. So we really are a community space. We'd love to have folks uh, in the building. Just the other day, we had a seminar in the space with over 200 people, uh, part of a, a medical seminar that uh, uh, medical professionals came in for continuing education credits. Um, so we're always utilizing the space in new and unique ways. And who who would have thought? I mean, we've done weddings. We've done, yeah. you name it, we've done it at the Spire That's Center. great. That's really great. It's a multi-use space. Now, you are a nonprofit. Do you have um, opportunities for people to volunteer? And how, how, do, how, do, how do people donate or, or help you? Sure, absolutely. So we love folks uh, supporting the Spire Center uh, in both ways, us supporting them and them supporting the Spire Center. We are a nonprofit. Um, and we are so excited to be able to offer an usher program, uh, a box office volunteer program, so people can be involved in the day-to-day -day you know, operations of the Spire Center, maybe even a clerical capacity, or even helping us get the word out in an awareness campaign and marketing. Uh, and then on day of shows, we have volunteer opportunities for ushers, for box office volunteers, and some general uh, assistance as well. And people can always go on the Spire Center website uh, for, those inf you know, for that information. And then we always are welcoming folks to support the Spire Center in any way they can, whether it's with their talents or financially. And uh, feel free always spirecenter.org uh, and support the Spire Center uh, right there on the homepage. Excellent. Well, congratulations on your reopening and bigger and better than ever and all the things you do to bring the community together. We so appreciate it. Um, we'll see you again, probably, hopefully not 18 months from now, but we'll see you again and catch up with you again down the road. Well, thank you so much for having me, and uh, always fun to be here with you. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Julie and Kevin. To check event listing and learn more about the Spire, visit their website at spirecenter.org. The Pembroke Council on Aging is hosting an open house and looks forward to welcoming you on November 10th from 4 to 7 p.m. Drop by and chat with the staff, board, and the offices and agencies that help the COA provide services. There will be representatives from the offices of the Plymouth County Sheriff, Plymouth County District Attorney, Senator Susan Moran and Representative Josh Cutler, as well as the Suicide Prevention Coalition, Veterans Department, GATRA, Exercise Instructors, Town Health Nurses, Assessor's Office, the Library, and many more. Enjoy light refreshments and the music of Earth Harmony as you learn more about the services and programs offered at your senior center. So that staff can plan for this event, please call 781-294-8220 to let them know you'll be there. During the summer of 2020, we here at PAC TV began producing a documentary centering on interviews with members of our community and their lived experience of the pandemic. Our hope was that the pandemic and the production would be over in a few short months. But because so much can and has changed, we've decided to give you a sneak peek and check back in one year later with some of our community friends who participated. Next up, we check back in with local Renaissance man, Mike Joshua.
when last we met, it was a year ago. Unbelievably. That's not possible. <laughs> well, then again, it seems like a week ago and five years ago. At, and five years at ago. At the same time. So. We were all masked except for when we were um, actually interviewing and right. we were more than six feet apart. And now, fortunately, hopefully, we can be a little less than that. Tell yes. me what your last year has been <laughs> oh, like. God. Uh, crazy, right? Just crazy, like like everybody's year. Ups, downs, a lot of in-betweens. Um, but I don't know, overall, I think getting, you know, spit out of the machine, at, you know, at the <laughs> end here, or hopefully, what is the end? Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm in a better place in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Like many of us, some work um, was not possible during COVID. What have you been doing this past year since I talked with you? Big thing. I've been working on a film, on a, a science fiction film called The Last. It was finally done and we got it released. Uh, mm -hmm. It is uh, available on Amazon Prime, but you can rent it now for a, a, a low price. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it was just something that we had shot and really kind of stalled just production-wise, low budget, you know the deal. Yes. And then also I'm like, all right, it's a pandemic and things are, you know, not good for so many people, but... Yeah. Here's something we can do, and we're not going to make a ton of money. If we even made our money back, it would be awesome, but it's done. We did it yes. in the pandemic, so it kind of motivated me to be like, okay, we can, we have time here. Let's use it wisely and not just, not just eat ice cream and yeah. watch movies, <laughs> which there was plenty of. Yes. Um, so that was big, and then it seemed like once I got that kind of out of my headspace to move forward, Started doing a lot more work in the podcasting um, world, know? which is great. So kind of went from radio to podcasting, which is kind of a natural thing. But uh, Mudhouse Media. Yeah. Um, Are is they out of Boston? Out of Boston, startup company. Um, joined them, you know, part time at first, and now you know sit here today, almost full time. You know, it's kind of, it's getting there, but the projects are getting bigger and better what kind of podcasting are you doing? so i was the producer of a true crime series called saint sinners and serial killers Ooh, which is all the uh, good ones. two <laughs> it's very <laughs> a lot of alliteration uh casey sherman and dave wedge yeah so two uh local guys uh dave worked uh, still works i believe at the herald and has for years casey sherman worked in tv news in boston has written a ton of books so to be able to be their producer was yeah. great so they do all the writing and then I record and do all the you know sound editing and mixing and and make it you know from voiceovers to you know a layered um, a podcast with sound effects and all that kind of stuff so we've had our first uh, season in the book season two is coming up uh, this fall nice so I'm excited about that and currently working on a podcast for the World Trade Center again through Mudhouse Media they contacted Mudhouse to do uh, a podcast about the last 20 years. So it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11 coming up, which yeah. is also mind blowing. So it's not a podcast about 9-11, but it's a podcast about the last 20 years, literally rebuilding from that day oh. to today. And it's pretty fascinating with, you know, the politics and the construction and all the different agencies that are involved that you have to deal with and the different mayors they've had i don't know whatever it is like you know nine different mayors that yep. that run that um that the port authority is run by the mayor you know the, the mayors yes. are a big part of the port authority yep. one from new jersey one from new york and it's just a treadmill of people coming in and out and as soon as a new person comes in everything has to stop and they have to look it over and so it's a pretty fascinating um story awesome. so that's called top of the world to hear on demand so that's been amazing so these things have kind of popped up that i can work at home primarily yes. do some recording went to new york a couple times to to do some stuff down there but things i could do distanced yes <laughs> from people in my studio at home which i've been i've been a stay-at-home dad and freelancer for well, my daughter's 19, so 19 years. Wow, amazing. So I've been socially distanced from yes. people <laughs> for, for quite a while. Yes. So but be you it. are still doing Americanorama? Americanorama is still one night a week, Thursday nights on WATD. WATD, so. awesome. Hanging in there one night a week just because, you know, I love radio and it's hard to it's hard to let it go. Yes, and we don't want you to let it go. So 
Just, um, just and Thursdays. in your spare time, you're in a band. <laughs> playing a band. Yep. Uh, my wife and I play in a ba uh, Blondie tribute band called Hey Blondie. Yeah. So we'll have some gigs coming up. And what do you play? Uh, I'm a drummer. You're a drummer. My wife plays the Debbie Harry role. She also plays guitar, and I drum in our Pretenders tribute band <laughs> called Pretendica. <laughs> so we often play together. We open up for ourselves. Why, why have two bands when we can be both Absolutely. bands? Absolutely. And, and is that a passion project? Another way that... Um, yeah, just, yep. It's kind of date night it turned into Yeah. maybe 10 years ago. And we were like, we should play in a band. Because we, we had always played, but we never played together. And once the kids were a little older that we could get a babysitter, we're How like, why fun. don't we go do a gig of yeah. some sort? So. so you've also been, when a DJ can't be at the table with, a, with people there enjoying your music, you can do it virtually, as you've shown. Uh, yeah, I started to do, and again, it took me like a couple months when people were go, going out, oh, I'm doing virtual this and virtual that, and I'm like, I should do that, and then I'd get some equipment together and be like, wah, wah, <laughs> like, oh, then I got to get a thing, and a couple more weeks would go by, and I'm like, I got to figure out how to, and then I'm like, I need another computer, like, oh, well, technically, I should get another computer, like, and then stimulus money came in, and I was like, oh, I could use a new computer. Maybe that's not the best thing to do. But so solve the technical issue. Yeah. Got on Twitch, which will make you feel a yeah. thousand years old, mm -hmm. which some people are like, I don't know how to do it. Psh, they're out. Yeah. But I'm like, no, nope, you'll figure it out. It's a gaming platform. Can't give up. Find where I am DJing. So DJs would DJ on Twitch because if you try to do Facebook Live, the algorithm would shut you down because you don't have rights to play the music. Yep. Yeah. But for some reason, Twitch, with all the gaming music, falled. Who knows? It's maybe it's illegal. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> no, whatever it is, no, definitely. all the DJs were going there, and you can just play, 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 and they don't shut you down, and you can play anything. So people are like, you should do, like, you know, an X night thing. And I'm like, okay, I guess. It was like 25 years ago. At this point, I picked it up for about four years in the 90s that I DJed at Axis, and the show was on the air, and... So I resurrected it and threw it out there and, you know, promoted it. Next thing you know, you had like 50 people in, a, in the chat and checking out the songs. And I'm in my basement <laughs> with my wife. My wife would dance because she's a dancer. Yeah. Um, you know, she would come in and out of the frame. To, oh, how great. You know, then she'd go take a break, you know, <laughs> yes. like in the clubs, off yeah. the speaker, go take a break, hydrate, <laughs> come back. And I was like, well, this is kind of cool. And it gave us something to do. And it gave us, again, a music connection yep. with a lot of our friends. And then friends of friends that were jumping in that I ended up becoming like friends with because we'd have all these musical connections with. So it was like this cool little community. Um, and again, everybody's virtual saying, you know, you know someday we're going to do this live, which I'm actually doing tonight. Going into Boston to spin yeah. <laughs> an X night. Um, with people around, which, and I'm hoping not, you know, that enclave of people that were yeah. part of the virtual experience come out. So, again, it was cool just trying to keep it going, right? Keep it going. Like, so more than anything, throughout COVID, you've managed to sustain community. Yeah, I mean, well, you had to, right? I mean, I think, and that's why I think some people out there that seem to be yelling the loudest, like in, um, in social media, mm -hmm. I don't think they have it. They're lonely. Or they have it, and all, but all they're doing is like, yeah, and this, and I'm miserable because of them, and you're miserable because of them. Instead of being like, why am I? What am I doing that's making me miserable? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's me. So kudos for finding the fun. Try. I mean, trying. Yeah. Figuring out how to make it work finally. <laughs> Hitting the button. Like, I don't know. Are we on? <laughs> like, am I broadcasting to people? <laughs> Who's out there? Who's out there? I'm on. And you're like, is anybody there? And all of a sudden, oh, wow. Well, people care. This is fun. And we didn't just fall into this bucolic surrounding. We're at Soul Homestead <laughs> for a reason, because in your spare time, you're also on the board of yep. Soul Homestead. I'm the vice president of the board here at Soul. So if you're ever feeling like the weight of the world, hopefully you can have a space. This is where I would come with my kids when things would get, you know, I'd just be like, oh, I got to get over to the farm. Why? Yes. Just... For this. Re and refocus. How has COVID affected operations here? Ooh, I mean, definitely got hit. All programs were canceled. Yeah. So we're a non I mean, like a lot of nonprofits, so mm -hmm. not dissimilar, but uh, we only have two part time employees really that, that work here um, mm -hmm. an executive director, 
and an education um, director. So that's the only people that really are paid to work here. And yeah. when those programs go away, it's just hard to keep the, the farm afloat. After school programs yeah. are the biggest thing. So obviously you couldn't do any field trips, yeah. summer camps. Um, I mean, there's some kids running around today because summer camp is back. Which, yay, you know, great. which is, a, yeah, now, with, you know, people are obviously, you know, beating down the doors to try to get in. So now yeah. there's waiting lists for everything. So it was tough, but we had, you know, a lot of support um, through donations. And actually so many more people visited the farm just to come and walk around on their own. It's because safe you, to be outside. We safe to be outside. We made sure um, people knew like via social media that come to the farm. We can't have big groups and big tours, but you can come out with your little group yeah. and socially distance around the farm and people came out in droves and then we started booking um, our executive director for personal tours as a way to make money for the farm get your yeah. whatever the you know it was eight at the time or something get yeah. your get your group of eight and the executive director pay for a personal tour and people were lining up for that so we found ways to you know stay afloat let you people know hey we're still here and then once things eased up um, this spring we were able to start our uh, concert series so you know local beer local food trucks making it a thing and again it's outside so if we do if we're getting too many people for you you can <laughs> Go you, look you can goats. take a walk you can <laughs> hang out you can bring a chair you can listen from anywhere Mike how has this past year played out differently than you anticipated when we last met or has it I guess, I guess personally I'm busier. So I didn't, at the beginning of COVID when I got laid off, you know, I was the guy in front of the fire pit, like <laughs> what's dad doing out there? <laughs> you know, just dad's thinking deep dad's thoughts. Dad's listening to music and drinking, um, <laughs> trying to figure out where he went wrong. But then, you know, <laughs> things again, you keep the positive, you know, yeah. mojo going. And yeah. so now I'm like, I'm kind of surprised that, you know, on a personal note, it looks you know, pretty good. And my daughter got through her first year of college and everybody's healthy, right? That's yes. the, the thing. Like you can complain about money or not being able to go to concerts or getting mm -hmm. served quickly at a restaurant. But, uh, you know, it's people just kind of lost their way of like, it's like you didn't lose, you know, your parents or, you know, your loved one or the, You're lucky. make it more local and worry about your own stuff. And don't worry about like that big picture that they keep telling you to like, worry about and just yeah. bring it back to like you and yours and your people and your circle and if your circle if something's not happening in your circle <laughs> move on or you know draw another one or erase Try that part circle. of it and <laughs> you know and don't get so caught up in all the negative yeah. stuff because it most of it really does not affect you it just it doesn't yeah it does not. You can make it affect you, and it will affect you if you let, or if you just, you know, focus on the, you know, oh, I just got pinged, more horrible news. It's like, then shut it off. Why do you want to get pinged horrible news all day? What? Turn off the news. And maybe that's a part of it. Like, yeah, it is, it is tough, yeah. you know, yeah. to do that. Like, I heard somebody, and I, I can't quote them because I can't remember exactly who said it um, in a podcast <laughs> that I was recording. Um just that maybe it is so tough now because this is that moment. Yes. Like we're in that tough moment that we will look back on and go, wow, that was, <laughs> that was a hell of a fight. And the people that are hanging on to like some of the bad stuff <laughs> are just grasping it so hard because they don't want change, but change is, is moving. It's the last gasp of the dinosaurs. Yes, I like that. And that's why it's so that's why they're so vocal and so yes crazy and so like you know it's like a beehive like yeah and you can't talk a lot of sense to a lot of people but i think that's that's why i think it's because things are moving and it is moving in the right direction so think about that part yeah and not about that weight that's dragging the forward motion down because it's going to come we're going to shake it off so when you look at um, holistically at society with the climate crisis and um, inclusivity and the fight for inclusivity and equal rights across the board and the political fray that 
has devolved into um, us versus them on mm -hmm. whatever side someone's on when we're just right. people. Um, do you think this is a flex point in history? Do you think, you know, to your point, do you think this is a transition point in all of those things? I think so. I really think it is. And maybe it's not, you know, it's not just this, these four year political cycles. We got to yeah. like pull ourselves or the two year, the four year, like we just pull our head out of this way of thinking. It's like, so I think it is a flex time, but maybe it's going to be 15 years from now that we look back and go, oh, wow, that was the thing that brought us here. And not just like every two or four years, someone's going to have some magic answer. Like we just keep falling into that trap. And I think it is, I think it is divide and conquer. You got this side, you got that side. What's easier to conquer <laughs> this yeah. than this. So to me, it's like, you got to find more of the middle and you know, it's not just like, I mean, that's what they want. You're over there and you're over there and, yeah. and people are just running to those like sides and you can't run all the way to the side because then you're just, oh, how are you, how are you different from that other side that you're just going to, you know, then you're, then you're stuck yeah. and you're caught. And then some people I know feel like they can't come back because yeah. it's something, well, now I can't do that. I'll be weak. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh my God, it's <laughs> not that I haven't done that. We've all you know, done we're, that. We've all, you know, yep. but to see it and be like, yeah, I'm going to push, come back a little bit and say, that's, that might be a little too much <laughs> or, maybe, you know. Do you think we all need to do work in welcome each other, welcoming each other back? I think so. And oh, not, forgive it. and not, you know, not insane people who are, you know, hurtful and because that's another thing of like, well, if you're, if you're accepting everyone, then you have to accept. And I'm like, well, you know, okay, easy. Like yeah. if someone's a complete lunatic and as I consider them a threat that's going to be a little slower of a roll. yeah yeah <laughs> to just be like, oh come in my house and you know, <laughs> well, I don't know everything. if I need yeah right <laughs> you know I need your bad energy around me but I think a couple steps toward the middle would help everybody without getting weighed down it's not gonna be easy hey we're all working together it's all it's all awesome no everything, everything is awesome. awesome I wish it was that's I recommend the Lego movie to so many people and they're like well I don't you know or my kids are grown up and I'm like go watch the Lego movie because it's one of those they have so many little you Easter, know, eggs. Easter eggs for for adults that are like amazing but it's you know yeah. we quote the Lego movie all the time because that's amazing. exactly what they were talking about like <laughs> just being on this treadmill and not really thinking about hey I could I could do something else I could do my own thing yeah. I could say I don't want to do that and that doesn't make me bad. <laughs> I could sit or that weak. out. I could be a part of that. I could protest that, but not that. It's fine. Yeah. You don't have to be all in or all out. Like we gotta stop that. Yeah, so I don't know, I agree. It's gotta be a little more like, well this is we've been most of this, so I'm gonna go there, but not all the way to the end. <laughs> up against it cuts the wall. you out. When you talk about your family your who, who does your family unit consist of uh so it's my wife and i have two kids a 19 year old um and a 17 year old i mean there's a lot of intense like family time which i think was good and i could see for some people if your family's not as cool as if, yours if it's not, <laughs> i was gonna say that <laughs> just if you have you know if you have some issues or you don't spend a lot of time together then all of a sudden you're in the house and you know you don't like each other it might be difficult but yeah but I think our family has always spent a lot of time together, or at least marked out quality time and meal times. And here's the time that we all have to shut our devices off and actually communicate. And so we had these, you know, movie times, music times. So when we were forced to do it even more, I think we were in a good spot to, you know, even obviously we got on each other's nerves and there were squabbles. And, yeah. But overall, I think, you know, on that personal side, just my wife and I, we had that conversation at the beginning we said we're gonna make it through you know like some people aren't people are gonna have a hard time people are gonna lose jobs and work and then I lost some work and we're gonna find a way we're gonna be those people at the end that make it work so here so we do are. you think having that um, determination and family stability and that resource to go back to yeah uh, you got to have a team right yeah I think you you absolutely especially in the hardest time you need the team you can't just be like well I'm gonna shut everything down and go inside my head 
you yeah. know, and live with it because it's just too long as we <laughs> as we found out. As we found out. It wasn't out. two weeks or two months. It was a long time. And if I think if you didn't have a support system, you know, no one's strong enough to deal with this stuff by yourself. So we did have the, you know, class of 2020. My daughter's had, you know, the end of her senior year was blown up and graduation was weird and yeah. prom was canceled. And then, well, don't worry because being a freshman in college is going to be strange. <laughs> During a pandemic. During a pandemic and you can't go in other kids' rooms, but, you know, you know, keep them up, right? Like, yeah. you know, even if you were having a tough day or a tough week or a tough moment or half a day or, you know, if the kids are down and they're worrying, well, you got to, you got to push that aside and because I've been saying for a for a 19 year old a year and a half is a much bigger percentage yes. of dealing with this than someone at my age where I'm like yeah we're gonna, you know we're gonna get th there will be an end <laughs> yeah we'll get through it and even if it's two years well two years to me is a very is a much smaller you know it's a blip but yeah. for them or, th or then you think about a 15 year old or a 10 year old or a six year old dealing with it that two years is huge chunk of their life so um you just got to kind of roll with it and realize everyone's dealing with it in a different way and not necessarily yeah. in the best way so you got to talk about it check on people yeah you know and say those things out loud like we're gonna we're gonna do it or today sucked why did it <laughs> suck let's yes. talk about it so we don't do it again and yes it was my fault and i was <laughs> you know sorry i was being an ass about whatever but you know yeah. It's COVID and I'm losing my mind. The COVID mind fog is real. The best we can do is be gentle with ourselves and each other. Thanks, Mike Joshua, for checking back in with the local scene. With cooler weather comes home heating bills and the South Shore Community Action Council's fuel assistance program for low-income households is now accepting applications. You can call South Shore Community Action Council at 508 746 6707 or toll free long distance at 877 383 5243. For first time applicants, you can apply online at sscac.org. You'll receive a follow up call from a staff member to review the information submitted and go over any missing documents needed to complete the process. Once your application is approved, both you and your fuel supply company will receive a written notification from SSCAC indicating the amount you have been approved for. For more information, visit the South Shore Community Action Council website. And visit pactv.org slash the local scene for more of what's good and good to know in our area. That's it for this episode of Local Matters. From all of us at PAC TV, have a safe and happy week. We will see you next time. Thank you for watching. We are grateful for your attention. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to The Local Scene here and share everywhere. Thank you, friends.